All right, I'm going to show another feature of the uh, DCAX uh, 86100D. Um, so, if you had all the money to buy one of these, you would have bought it for a particular reason. Yes, it's a nice oscilloscope. Yes, you can do spectrum analyzers. It's got a great uh, TDR in it. Those are all great features, and maybe those are the things that you needed out of the instrument. But I would say that a majority of the people who buy these boxes uh, are doing communication work where they're looking at uh, data and they want to make sure their data is not getting corrupted, that they have clean data. And so they're looking at uh, things like eye, eye diagrams, okay? So we're going to be taking a look at those. Now, in my um, lab, sh garage, whatever, I don't have any sources of communication signals, but um, that doesn't stop you from learning about them with this machine. And I have a lot to learn. So um, one of the things uh, that you find is uh, down uh, at the bottom here, um, there's a little area where we can select what do we want to, what uh, channels do we want to turn on. We have channels uh, 1A and 2A. Uh, those are here on this plugin. So this is 1 and 2 right here. Okay, uh, 1 and 2. This is the trigger input. Um, the difference between trigger input here and trigger input down here is just a relay. The, there's nothing that happens inside this plugin. It just goes straight through and goes into the machine. All right, so anyway, so channel one, channel two. And then over here at the bottom is channel 3A and 4A. That's these. This is channel 3A and this is 4A. And then if we use a little arrow here and we'll move over, there's 5A and 5B. What, what is those aren't, I don't see a five plugin, right? So let's click on one of those. And uh, we have this uh, 5A and 5B, just like all the other ones. But um, we have this little thing here called uh, data simulation. So if I click on that, you can make fictitious data. So it has a whole bunch in here built in, okay? So uh, here is a, a, a data source, and then there's a filter and then there's jitter and noise, okay? So uh, we, can, we can add the fil we can turn the filter on and off. Uh, we can turn the data source on and off. We can see what type of data that we have. Is it a clock? We can actually have data from a file. We're gonna say we have data. Formats are non-return to zero or PAM4. I'll show you PAM4 a little, in a little bit. We'll do non-return to zero. Um, I'm not gonna explain these too much, um, why, why they call what they are. And anyway, you can look that up. Um, then you can look at the patterns. Uh, these are like the uh, pseudo uh, randomness. So you can say, okay, we're gonna have a, a certain, certain pattern, uh, 2048 symbols. And then you can say, okay, well, we have all these different these all these different types of, of standards in the world. We have uh, uh, SDI, we, uh, we have SADA, okay? Uh, we've got, uh, what are some other things? 10-bit Ethernet, uh, here's another Ethernet. Okay, so uh, SDM, okay. Let's say we've got this one here, okay? And so you can change the amplitude and the offset and everything. Let's just close these for a second, okay? Now, um, our data just looks terrible on the oscilloscope, and that's because we need to change the triggering. Uh, the triggering is going to look at the incoming signal and do a pattern lock onto it. And I hit this auto detect button here, and it's found our bit rate was 10.3125 gigabits per second. The pattern length is 2048. And uh, now when we go back and look, you can see that we have a very clean, clean signal, okay? So let's go back to our, and, that, and this is an, I'm sorry, this is an eye diagram, okay? Uh, this is what an eye diagram looks like. The data can come along and just go straight, or it can go straight at the bottom, or it can transition from the high state to the low state, or the low state to the high state, and that just catches all of those variables. It's, it's sampling it, and it's just putting them all onto the screen into an eye diagram. Now we could go back to our original simulator, 
and we can uh, put in jitter and noise. So we're going to add add some jitter, okay? And now you can see that we have kind of blurring in the horizontal direction because the time base is going to jitter back and forth. So now we've added we've added jitter. Uh, we can go back and we act, can actually add noise as well. So, uh, and these are, uh, jitter was in picoseconds, noise is in uh, millivolts, all right. And now we go back and look at our signal. Uh, now it's, it's uh, uh, blurring in the horizontal and blurring in the, in the vertical. So we've added noise and we've added jitter. So now this is what a typical uh, eye diagram might look like. Um, and then you can say, okay, well, uh, let's say we have the same amount of jitter and noise. Uh, and we changed our uh, waveform. We we're running at 10 uh, gigabits per second. What happens if we went up to say uh, a 32x fiber channel, which is 28 gigabits per second? Um, let's do that. We need to do the trigger, uh, detect the trigger, and there it's detected the detected the trigger. And now you can see. Uh, uh, things are starting to get really bad. Our eye diagrams filling in with noise and jitter, and we're going to have a lot of things that go bad on us, right? Okay, so uh, let's go back. Let's put it on something nicer again. Uh, let's go here to um, uh, oops. Uh, select from the list. Let's go back to uh, 10 gigabit. Uh, that was fine. And let's re-trigger on that. And now everything looks good. And then you can do um, statistical analysis on it. There's a whole bunch of things we can look at, but we can actually add a, um, we can actually add a mask. 10 base T, 10 gig, big, I don't know, we'll just, we'll just add one. There we go, that one worked good. Um, so what it's doing is it's creating a mask, and if the data goes through this area of detection, it will flag an error. Uh, you don't want anything going through this eye, okay? I'll uh, make it bigger here, all right? So let's say we went back to our waveform and uh, we added some, uh, let's say we suddenly we got a 10 millivolt offset in the data, okay? And um, let's see here, did that work? Uh, offset 10 millivolts, scale, oh, I did, I did it on the wrong one, up here. We have offset of 480 microvolts. Let's say we went to, uh, oops, Let's see here. Let's say we went to three millivolts of offset. Did that change anything? We need to have a bigger. Let's say we have 10 millivolts of offset. Uh, and uh, oh, the eye diagram is moving with us, uh, which isn't what we want. Okay, let's add. Let's add something different then. Let's. Um, Let's say we went to the data simulation, we added more jitter. Let's say we're going to add uh, 10 picoseconds of jitter. Uh, let's see if it text detects anything. Yeah, if you can see the eye diagram, it's starting to have some red areas, okay? And whenever the jitter was big enough to go into the eye diagram, it's giving us these little red spots. And that will show up in the statistic. You can gather statistics with this. It will show you all of these things. You can also see that uh, that little center area of the eye diagram got teeny tiny. And it's saying that that's really the only place that's clean now. Everything else is dirty. And we can't guarantee anything except for that tiny, tiny, tiny little eye. So let's go back to the uh, data simulator here. We'll uh, put our uh, put our jitter back to I don't know two picoseconds, and uh, we'll just get rid of these, and then we'll do a uh, clear display and start it over. So there you go, you can see that we have this nice clean eye diagram again. Okay, so you get the idea of eye diagrams and uh, having the what's called a, a, a mask, an eye an eye diagram mask. 
Um, okay, so this is uh, signals that are either high state or a low state. If you're in the communication fields, the really, really fast fiber optic and stuff uses actually, instead of two levels, zero and one, they actually use four levels called PAM4. So let's go to our simulation and let's change uh, our signal to PAM4. I'll hit uh, clear display again. So. Now you see we have these four separate levels and the data can change between them. And uh, this is a way to increase the speed of the system fourfold, right? Uh, right from the get-go. I asked my friend, why don't they do more or why don't they go to a qualm system where they actually have both amplitude and phase? And he says, it just works out that this is the fastest one. If you do the other ones, you have to introduce a whole bunch of other things and that just kind of slows you down as well or maybe makes it too expensive. Maybe you can just put in twice as many of these and get the same you know, thing and it's still cheaper. Um, so anyway, he says PAM4 is just kind of the standard. And you can see that here that they, the only random, or uh, the only uh, two different types of data that this machine has is, is uh, not returned to zero and PAM4. So anyway, that's PAM4. Uh, that's that's a, what it looks like. And uh, yeah, anyway, just a brief introduction to kind of communication waveforms and why, why people buy this type of box um, and uh, try to measure stuff like this.